Hi, Thomas from Field Tennis. The serve is the most complex stroke in tennis and that's why it's the most difficult one to master. So if you want to build a proper advanced tennis serve, meaning you're using a continental grip and you're able to hit the ball with top spin slice or hit it flat, then you have to follow proper progressions in order to build technically correct advanced serve. The following video is an overview of the fundamentals of a tennis serve and I will show you seven step-by-step -step progressions that I use almost daily with tennis players who come and see me to work on the tennis serve. Most of the times I don't really have to go deep into the details of a serve but I just have to make sure that these fundamentals are in place first and then the serve will start to work. The first step is a proper stance. So for right-handers position yourself in a way so that your left foot is pointing to the right net post and that your right foot is parallel to the baseline. The feet are also aligned in a way so that the heel of the first foot is aligned with the toes of the back foot. Now this is the basic stance which you can then adjust a little bit depending on which direction you're serving to. And I also want to point out that I really recommend that when you start building your serve you do it in the direction of the ad court and I'll explain in more detail why that's necessary when we come to the hitting part of the serve. The second step is a proper grip and we have to use a continental grip if we want to hit the serve flat with topspin or with slice. One way to find a continental grip is to position your hand on the racket in a way so that once you put your left index finger here in this little valley next to the bone or your thumb that this left index finger is pointing to the top left edge on the racket like this. Step three is the hitting part and that's the most important part of the serve and I actually like to work on this part before I start working on the backswing because you will realize later that if you're doing the hitting part correctly the backswing will naturally align and help you achieve what you want to do here. So that's why the hitting part is more important than doing the backswing first. One of the most common mistakes that players make, even when they hold the continental grip and even if they have a proper stance, is that once they begin their serve they start to orient very quickly towards the court and then they swing towards the target with their whole arm. I know that's the most natural for us, but that's not how an advanced serve works. So their usual serve looks something like this. So they turn towards the target, they go very strongly from their shoulder and they usually finish on their left. And so in order for me to correct these players, I use a very simple system which teaches them that the serve has, instead of one swing path towards the target, it actually has two swing paths. So the first swing path is roughly at a 45 degree angle and then the second one is perpendicular to the net. And this is how we simulate the proper movement of the arm. So when we toss the ball for the normal usual serve, for the flat serve or maybe for the uh, slice serve, the ball is somewhere in front of us and a little bit to the right. And so our first swing path towards the ball is with the edge. So we're swinging towards the ball with the edge at the 45 degree angle. And then we can imagine that once the racket reaches the ball and the strings are pointing towards the target, we switch our movement to this one. And so it's not just one continuous movement, but we imagine that our arm moves this way at a roughly 45 degree angle and then we pronate towards the target. At least we can simplify and make this movement a pronation. It's a little bit more complex movement, but for now we'll just call it the pronation. So our serve is swing towards the ball and then pronation and it looks something like this in this third part. And so this is the main difference between a very simple serve towards the target and a more advanced serve where our arm makes two swing paths. Of course later we do it in a very smooth manner and these two swing paths seem to merge together but if you're serving correctly you're pretty aware that you are swinging like in two directions towards the ball. 
Because we are now breaking down the serve into smaller parts so that they are easier to learn, we are unfortunately also breaking down the natural flow of the body. And so as this is especially obvious in this part where we're trying to learn the proper swing path towards the ball. And one way we can solve this problem is that when we're starting to serve from this position, we don't start from a static position, but we do a little bounce, as I like to call it. So we'll, we, you can bounce the racket a little bit like this, and then go from this bounce into swing path number one and then swing path number two. So the whole exercise looks something like this. I just want to loosen up a little bit. And then I do one, two on the ball. Oh, here's one more. A little bit more advanced way of doing this exercise is to actually try and do the bounce, one more bounce after you have tossed the ball. So it looks something like this. So I start with my racket a little bit higher so that I feel that I have some space to drop the racket or to bounce it off something. So my hand, my arm is very loose. So I start from here. I toss the ball first and after I toss the ball, I release, I let go of the racket. I feel this bounce and then I'm doing one, two. Now this has shown to be very effective for learning the proper drop of the serve. Later, when you're going to put the whole serve together, if you've done a few of these bounces, it will just happen very naturally that you're doing the proper drop in the serve. Step four is the backswing with the toss. I won't go into too many details about the toss. So for now, just this. So place the ball right in the middle of your palm and then just hold it with your thumb and you're leaving some space on the tips of your fingers where you're going to place your racket. So also know that you're tossing with a straight arm. So for those of you who would like to know more details about the toss, you can take a look into my serve course. Here's how we're going to work on the backswing. You're going to swing both arms simultaneously like a pendulum and let them go up and down simultaneously. And eventually you're going to end up in this position, which we're going to call the trophy position. I personally don't like to teach the completely vertical racket in the trophy position, and that's for two reasons. Number one, oftentimes when players end up in this position and they're about to initiate their serve, the racket really likes to fall into this direction and open up the palm, the hand, which we call the waiter's tray serve, and that's really bad for the acceleration. So it really doesn't give you good acceleration on the ball and it prevents good topspin and good slice. So if you're in this position, many times the racket wants to go this way. And the other reason is, if I show from this angle, when players toss the ball and they're in this position, like very vertical racket, they feel they have a long way to go to complete their drop, their backswing, and then coming up to the ball. So what happens oftentimes is they shorten it, they make it quite shallow and they serve like this. So the drop is way too shallow because they feel they don't have enough time. So what I prefer to do is I prefer to teach this trophy position where the racket is close to the head. So one way you can check that is that you do your backswing and then you just tap the back of your head with the bottom edge of the racket. So you're here and of course there must be some space between the racket and the head. But in order for you to know whether you're in the right place, you just move the racket this way and you check, okay, I'm in the right place. Then you move it back. So this is the back, the back swing sequence. You're going to toss the ball and catch it back again and then check if your racket is in the right place. Now this exercise is also very good to work on your toss. So you don't need any specific exercises for the toss unless you're having some really big problems. Because this exercise is automatically teaching you how to move your arm properly and where to toss the ball 
because the ball must fall right back into your hand. So here's the backswing sequence again. You want to toss the ball and then just check with your racket if you're somewhere close to your head. Step five is putting everything together, what you've learned so far. So we're going to put together the backswing and the hitting part. And so we're going to break down the serve into two parts. The first part is doing the backswing and catching the ball, finding your trophy position, and then you're going to remain in your trophy position. You will initiate the toss again, and then you're going to do the one-two exercise. So the bounce and one-two exercise, which you've already done before. So the whole sequence looks like this. We're doing the backswing, we're catching the ball, we're checking if you're in the right position, then we're gonna toss again and do one, two again. So that's why we can still leave the balls because they give us proper guidance of the two swing paths. So here's one more example. Part one, I'm in the right place, I can feel and I start again and I'm doing one, two. So hopefully you can see that this is starting to resemble the proper serve. So here we go again. The first part, I check, I do the bounce and one, two. Now we're almost ready to put the whole serve together, but before we do that, I'd like you to work on one exercise that actually produces the most power in the serve. And for that, you have to do two things simultaneously. So what needs to happen is that when your racket is starting to drop, your body must start to turn. Or in other words, we initiate the rotation of the body to our hips and then continue with our shoulders. So some words that you might hear that they relate to these are drive with your hip forward or rotate your hip or rotate your shoulders. But it's very important that this happens at the same time. So your racket drop and your body rotation must happen in the same time. I know we like to have things step by step or in sequence that are very clear, but in this case we cannot separate the drop from the body rotation, which is again one of very common mistakes that I see with players. So they're completing the drop, they want to work in sequence in their mind, they have a certain sequence, so now I complete the drop, okay, now I'm doing the serve. But in order for your serve to produce very effortless power, you must simultaneously drop the racket and start driving your hip forward or start rotating. So you're actually doing this exercise separately and I'll show from this angle and first you're doing without the ball and you're just trying to feel that as soon as you start dropping the racket you are start driving your hip forward. So in this case you can exaggerate a little bit and rotate your body a little bit more than you will actually do when you're serving but this gives you the right feel because when you do it right, you will just feel that your racket naturally accelerates or you might feel that your arm is like thrown out from this position. So again, is the key is that as you're starting your drop, you're loosening up your arm and you're starting to turn your body. So from this angle, it looks something like this. It looks something like this. And then you can continue. Or from this angle, it looks something like this. And here's the power move from the side angle. So first, without the ball, you're starting from your trophy position and you're trying to feel, okay, as soon as I drop my racket, I drive forward my hip. And so you go like this and then you can just complete your serve. So in this case, because we want to really feel what's going on, we can exaggerate a little bit and you can turn really forward like facing the court. But keep in mind that when you're doing a proper serve, we don't face the court until we finish hitting the, the ball. So when we're hitting the ball, we are at roughly 45 degree angle with the body. We are not facing the court yet. And only then, after we have completed the contact with the ball and we've completed the swing path number two, we can start turning towards the court. But in this case, because you really want to feel the effects of simultaneously dropping the racket and turning your body, 
Just feel free to really turn towards the court, really drive your hip forward, really rotate and then let the racket go. So again, without the ball, it's like this. And then you can also hit some balls where you are trying to feel the effects of the power move. Step seven is of course putting everything together. So what you can do first is you can do one serve in two parts where you really feel it, how the serve works and then just take a leap of faith and do the whole serve together and see how it feels. So with some repetition and practice, and I also recommend that you record yourself, you're going to start to see that your serve starts to look like a proper advanced serve. Now one more thought about the follow through. I've been sticking with this follow through for quite a while because as I mentioned before, one of the most common mistakes that players make is to use their arm a lot rather than this move to hit the ball and they oftentimes end up on the left side. So yes, we do end up on the left side. So let me show from this angle. So when we complete our serve, we do end up on the left side, but we can do it the wrong way and the right way. The wrong way is that as we're about to hit the ball, we are forcefully moving the racket to the left side with our shoulder. But that's not how the racket gets to the left side. It actually gets to the left side because we're hitting the server and we're swinging out towards the right side. We're pronating and then we're allowing the body to uncoil or to unwind and our arm will naturally swing to the left. So basically we're swinging our arm towards more to the right side and then we are coming back with the body towards the middle. We're loosening up and that's how the arm comes to the left side. So keep that in mind when you're working on the serve, when you're completing the whole serve, that you feel that the racket actually comes to the left side as you loosen up and not because you're actually swinging very forcefully from your shoulder towards the left side. So try to see this in my serve where I will stick for a while on the right side so I'll complete the serve on the right side and I will just gently allow my body to come back to the straight position that my shoulders become more level and then you will see that the racket naturally swings to my left side. So in my serve this is a little bit hidden when you see everything together. But now that you know what you're looking for, you will understand how the racket comes to the left side of the body. Now there's one more part that you have to work on as you're improving your serve. Namely, you have to work on the flow, on the fluidity of the serve. Right now we have broken down the serve into many parts so that they're easier to learn. But in the process, we have also broken down the natural movement of the body. We have broken down the flow, the fluidity. And so we have to keep putting it back together. And so one of the best tools you can use is the Serve Master by Lisa Dodson. And you just simply swing it in a continuous motion like this. So you can do follow through on the left side, but you can also do follow through on the right side. And if you go over to the totalserve.com, you will find very detailed instructions on how you can start working with the serve master, what are the right progressions. But the key point is that you want to re-establish the fluidity of your body, the fluidity of your motion, because we have been breaking it down. And especially when you work on your serve repeatedly, and there are certain parts of your serve that are not really good, perhaps the hitting part. So again, you'll be breaking down your serve into a smaller part and it might become very stiff, very mechanical. And so your final goal is to polish these little breaks in your surf so that everything is smoothly flowing. And so one of the best ways is the total surf using the total surf. You can of course use also the ball on the string that I've demonstrated one time before or the classical trick balls in the sock. But you can also use your racket which you hold with three fingers and again you just make it go in a very similar manner. So in a very continuous, smooth motion that never stops. 
So that means that you re-establish the flow, because flow means that the racket never stops. So while you're doing this exercise, you can also do a little technical thing here, and that is you're always swinging your racket on the edge. So this is the edges exercise that I also demonstrated in one of my previous videos. So as you're doing this exercise, you always lead with the edge. So when I swing this way, I lead with this edge, and then I'm doing my backswing, I'm coming from the trophy position into the drop, I'm leading with this edge, then I rotate my shoulders a little bit, now I lead with this edge, then I do this transition from this edge to this edge, and then I go into the follow-through, then I go out and I repeat the whole process again. So see if you can notice now that all the time as I'm swinging, except at the contact point where my racket points towards the camera or towards you, all the time the racket is on the edge. And so that's a very good exercise to reinforce the proper technique, the proper movement of the racket. In the end, I'd like to point out that I use these serving progressions, these fundamentals almost daily when I work with tennis players on their serve. So make sure that you can execute them properly, that you're doing them correctly, before you start adding more advanced stuff, like really coiling your body, working on your kick serve, jumping into the court or something like that. Thanks for watching and let me know how these seven steps to a proper advanced serve work for you.